Chapter 51 Once Thriving, Thriving Thoroughly Once Lost, Losing Thoroughly Jingmen Island, at Top Floor Presidential Suite The moment Tang Xiao hung up the phone, a middle-aged man standing next to the window fell down with a pale complexion. At the next moment, the middle-aged man turned as he fiercely slapped a young man at his side. The youngster, who looked at the middle-aged man with an anticipating expression, didn't guard against the anger from the middle-aged man. So he got slapped directly and fell to the floor. Eldest senior brother, why why you, why do you hit me? Zhang Taichun stared at Gong Daolong with a puzzled expression. Jia Ruidao only received three apprentices in his whole life. Respectively, they were the eldest apprentice Gong Daolong, the second apprentice Zhang Taichun, and the third apprentice Jia Yile. Jia Yile was Jia Ruidao's son and also his successor. The three brothers had a good relationship. They supported and cared for each other and were just like blood brothers. Their good relationship was even well known throughout the Shuangqing province. The only minor defect to the otherwise perfect brotherhood was that Jia Yile loved vanity and glory. His extreme impulsive nature made Gong Daolong and Zhang Taichun often clean up his mess, even Jia Ruidao also had to do the same. The reason Jia Ruidao had to rush to Jingmen Island was because Jia Yile lost a gambling bet very miserably. He even lost his temper after he lost, using his father's reputation and provoked big trouble. Jia Ruidao's reputation might be useful in the Xuanqing province, but not in other places of the country. Much less Jingmen Island, a place with quite a strong anti-foreigner sentiment. Not only was Jia Yile unable to deter others with his father's name, but he also suffered an even more humiliating treatment. In just three days, under the taunts of the opponent, the rash and impatient Jia Yile was hooked and lost 100 million. When Jia Yile finally realized the problem, he called his second senior brother, Zhang Taichun. Zhang Taichun had mastered most of Jia Ruidao's gambling techniques. He also doted on Jia Yile and rushed to Jingmen Island. Without even reprimanding or asking of Jia Yile's problem, he leaped into the opponent's traps and then lost another 50 million. Why did I hit you? Right now, you're still asking why I hit you? Master's wife's last will for us was to look after this little guy. But you fucked that up. You didn't fucking care that he went to gamble on Jingmen Island for half a month. You knew nothing about the circumstances and didn't tell master or me when he called you for help. You even played dumb with little brother. Zhang Taichun, do you realize that if master is doomed this time, what kind of situation we have to face? Ha! <laughs> Not only would we be bankrupt, but our reputation in Xuanqing province will also be ruined. You also know master's personality? Do you think Master would still want to live afterward? Gong Daolong almost roared at Zhang Taichun. T Tang Xiao. H he doesn't want to help us? Zhang Taichun no longer argued as he asked with a puzzled expression. I don't know whether Tang Xiao's gambling skills are good or not. But he perfectly knew that this water is too deep. He admitted that his gambling skills are not that good and is unable to help. He simply hung the phone up without even giving me the opportunity to speak. Having heard it, Gong Dalong's complexion turned dim as he sighed in desperation. T this. How could Tang Xiao be like this, for gamblers like us, once we thrive, we thrive gloriously, but once we lose, we lose completely. Not only would that affect our master and disciples' reputation, but also the entire Xuanqing province's reputation. He doesn't have any consideration about that, Zhang Taichun replied with a pale expression. Master has told us very clearly, Tang Xiao is not a gambler. He is not from our society. Gong Daolong smiled. He shook his head and added, let's think of other ways first. We can only move Tang Xiao out of favor and speak to him with reason slowly. After hanging up the call from Gong Daolong, Tang Xiao cleaned up the villa and then headed back to school. Taking leave this time for Tang Xiao was mainly to quench his body and complete the vitality tempering stage. Since he had completed tempering his body, 
Tang Shou naturally didn't need to stay outside. Tang Shou's past incarnation was completely obsessed with cultivation, alchemy, refining tools and talisman, as well as manufacturing symbols and charms. He didn't pay attention to the outside and was almost oblivious to the outside world, to the point that he was betrayed by his lover and close friend at the final moment. Since he already had the unique and peerless divine cultivation method of the underscore heavenly art of cosmic genesis underscore, coupled with his past incarnation's knowledge and experience, Tang Xiao wasn't worried about his strength's promotion being slow or not. Therefore, he just wanted to use his time and energy to familiarize himself with the worldly affairs and temper his state of mind, at the same time. When Tang Xiao entered the classroom, he realized that his classmates' expression when they looked at him was very strange. He even faintly heard some ugly words from them. He must have cheated to get the top scorer on the monthly test. If he really has the ability, he would be able to take first place again on this monthly test. Bah, it's unlikely for him to create that big sensation again. Yang Jian from class 5 has continued his first scorer for a few sessions of the monthly test. But he didn't study that serious every day. The way I see it, Tang Xiao thought that graduation is near. So he couldn't bear to act crazy once. He must have thought that at least he would be remembered by everyone. By his IQ, I don't think he really could have gotten first place. Suddenly hearing these words, it made Tang Xiao's heart very uncomfortable. But after he thought deeper, he slightly relaxed. He had a fallen for so long after all. His marks were at the very bottom. Suddenly, he leaped up to first place. It's no wonder that others wouldn't feel good about it. So how would he expect that they would like and respect him in an instant? Perhaps the instant results might cause a sensation for a moment, as well as shake some people. But as time passed by, the sensation caused by it would gradually disappear. Some people with ill intentions would always provoke and spread rumors to express their jealousy and resentment, and even slander him. Eldest brother, just fucking ignore them. They just have too much time and got no balls. They're just the kind of shh asterisk ts that will bite their own tongue one day. Seeing that Tang Xiao had come back, Yuan Chuling couldn't help but become overjoyed. After chatting for a while, he realized that Tang Xiao's face was a bit unusual. He quickly understood and whispered to comfort him. It's fine really. We'll slap them with our marks. Tang Xiao nodded. He then opened his school desk and prepared to flip over from the inside. The moment he opened his desk, Tang Xiao was shocked. Ten days had passed since he left school, and the desk had been fully stuffed with white paper exams. Eldest brother, I really admire your wise choice. You strolled out there and had some fun. You don't need to face this. Shh! Tie endless torture. Hey, hold on, why do I feel that you're wider and taller than before? You didn't get a plastic surgery, did you? Yuan Chuling suddenly realized something was wrong while he was speaking and then shouted. Since his voice was quite loud, everyone's eyes in the classroom shifted their sights on them all of a sudden. And then their eyes brushed over at Tang Xiao's body. Tang Xiao's heart thumped and his expression changed as he heard Yuan Chuling's words. Although Tang Xiao also found that his height became taller after he quenched his body, but after he had a few phone calls and pondered about other things, he had forgotten about the changes in his height. But when he prepared to explain it, the other's words suddenly echoed behind him, making him shocked. Damn fatty. You think you'll die if you're not boasting, won't you? Tang Xiao still owes his tuition fee, how the hell would he have the money to do plastic surgery, huh? If plastic surgery can make my height taller, I'll have one too. Bah, I know that that fatty only shouted to attract everyone's attention, don't pay attention to this bastard. Tang Xiao had become taller. But because he had entered class 10 for a month only, much less he sat in his seat most of the time and didn't move nor interact with his classmates, resulting in others feeling that his presence in the classroom was very weak. 
If it were not because of intentional provocations by Su Xiangfei, the class 10 students might have ignored such a student like Tang Xiao. They didn't care about his height, neither would they pay attention if his skin was white or black. Tang Xiao also thought that the change in his height might cause a sensation and suspicion. But the fact that it happened made him felt at ease. Everyone was simply ignoring Yuan Chuling and only mocked and ridiculed him before they got busy and back to their own things, no longer responding to him. Huh? Could it be that I was really wrong? Yuan Chuling looked at the Tang Xiao with a puzzled expression. But he couldn't help but also whisper, Man, my eyes could have really fooled me and made me mistaken. But, could it be that I also had mistakenly read the exam papers and my eyes were blurry? Tang Xiao now thoroughly felt at ease when he heard Yuan Chuling's words. Yuan Chuling was his closest buddy at Star City First High School. If even Yuan Chuling were not sure that he had undergone tremendous changes, others surely would be unable to see anything. As for his family members, Tang Xiao was never worried from the start. Seventeen and eighteen years old was the age when one's body had tremendous changes. He only went home once a month. His mom was also not necessarily concerned about his height. She might be stunned when seeing that his height suddenly became taller. It was very likely that she would only be pleasantly surprised, but she wouldn't have any suspicions or fears. After having chatted for a while with Tang Xiao, Yuan Chuling began to seriously read the book review. The knot in Yuan Chuling's heart perhaps had been untied completely. Maybe after the circumstances and environments had changed, his mentality also changed along with it. Tang Xiao could tell that Yuan Chuling was no longer a laughing slapstick chap like he was before because he was attentively studying right now. Having swept the exam papers in his school desk, Tang Xiao scraped them out and threw them into the trash can. He didn't want to waste his precious time on boring exercises and exam papers. The wealth, the companion, the cultivation method, and the place. The wealth is put in first place. So the next priority for me is carving the path to make money. Not this shitty college entrance test. Treading on the cultivation path particularly stressed on these four aspects, the wealth, the companion, the cultivation method, and the place. With the underscore heavenly art of cosmic genesis underscore, Tang Xiao had no worries with cultivation methods. Earth was a world with the final stage law. Apart from himself, Tang Xiao hadn't found any other cultivators and had no thought of finding other cultivators. As for the cultivation locations, since the Heavenly Palace's construction started to be built on Walled Hill Village, Tang Xiao temporarily didn't have to worry about it. But regarding the A wealth aspect, Tang Xiao more or less had no choice but to pay attention. Asterisk, Long Taos, side characters in Chinese operas who perform acrobatics and fight scenes. Asterisk, 12.47 to 13.07, don't ask me about the tree sap. Chapter 52, The Ultimate Madness People from ancient times have said, without sufficient wealth, it would be very difficult to raise anything. In the primary stages of cultivation, one's thoughts and time should be used to the greatest extent in cultivation, resulting in that there would be no time to make money. But lacking in cultivation resources would also make one's cultivation path very difficult. Right now Tang Xiao was poor and had no cultivation resources at all. Although he had an elegant villa in Southgate Town due to luck and coincidence, but it was others. However, he also liked the villa's location as well as its decoration. He was also reluctant to sell this villa. The villa was half forcefully given to him by Long Zhengyu, and it was impossible for Tang Xiao to sell it, else he would be looked down and despised by Long Zhengyu. Tang Xiao had no means to set up other homes since his savings was less than 10,000 yuan. He really could be said to be an extremely poor cultivator. If it were not for Long Zhengyu promising to fully help him out in building the Heavenly Palace, Tang Xiao knew that he would have no way to have his own land for cultivation. Fortunately, although Tang Xiao's cultivation was still in its primary stages, 
but he was not by any means a genuine green cultivator. So he could totally focus his time and mind to make money rather than only use them to cultivate only. It seems that I have to start making my own business. After thinking hard for a long time, Tang Xiao stopped frowning as an idea crossed his mind. The idea in Tang Xiao's mind was not the gambling that Yuan Chuling had recommended him, but rather picking the path of concocting pills business, of which he excelled at. Although coming up with concocted pills from the immortal world would be too shocking of an effect when selling them on earth, while the materials and ingredients for magical potions also might not be found on earth, but this didn't hinder Tang Xiao from doing whatever he needed. He could carry on the plan to alter and change the concocted pills processing according to Earth's actual situation. So his products could be completely accepted and popular amongst the people on Earth. Food and beverages businesses consume too much time and energy. Besides, if I want to expand the business on a big scale, it would need a huge amount of money, unless I cooperate with others. The first idea in Tang Xiao's mind was to improve the seasoning recipes and make money through the culinary industries. He thought about it but then hesitated because the seasoning recipes itself were not sold for high prices. Only after it was applied to food and beverages products would it sell at a sky-high price. And to the present situation, Tang Xiao couldn't afford to jump into the culinary business. Cooperating with others was actually a good way. But he would be most likely others' subordinates while getting someone else's trust was also not an easy thing. Apart from food and beverages, there is also liquor, cosmetics, and healthcare products. Tang Xiao racked his brain and also thought of the possibilities to apply the concocted pills into other fields of business. But Tang Xiao found that he knew nothing about these areas as he suddenly had a headache. Eldest brother, you're only sitting in the classroom. Could it be that you haven't found something unusual for a long time? After the bell rang, Yuan Chuling put down his book as he pushed Tang Xiao's arms and whispered. Huh? What particular things should I find? Tang Xiao was puzzled to hear Yuan Chuling's question as he asked with a confused expression. Having heard that, Yuan Chuling looked at Tang Xiao with a beaten by you expression. He then leaned on and whispered to Tang Xiao's ear, telling him about the recent occurrences in Tang Xiao's class. However, Yuan Chuling had yet to speak, but Tang Xiao suddenly stood up as he walked outside the classroom. Yuan Chuling was astonished as he opened his mouth wide and wanted to ask Tang Xiao's reason. But when his eyes looked at the beautiful figure outside the classroom, he immediately curled his lips and shut his mouth. What a damn play! I thought you really couldn't find Cheng Yennan since she didn't come for the first class session. Seeing Tang Xiao walking toward Cheng Yennan, a pondering expression was cast on Yuan Chuling's face. He's been gone for ten days. But eldest brother has become this bold and unrestrained like this. Damn, is he not afraid to be gossiped by the other students? Yuan Chuling thought as he stood up and slowly walked outside the classroom. Yuan Chuling and Tang Xiao's seats were at the furthest corner in the classroom. Since the both of them had seen Cheng Yennan's arrival, the others naturally saw her. Although Cheng Yennan was six months earlier than Tang Xiao in entering class 10, but her beautiful looks and frank character had been recognized and won over everyone's heart. She was even rated as the top 10 bells of Star City First High School. Almost half of class 10's boys liked her. But seeing Tang Xiao directly approach Cheng Yennan made the other boys suddenly nervous. It was near graduation time. A lot of boys' students who saw that they were hopeless in the college entrance test were preparing to confess to their favorite girls and hope to have a lively love life before graduation. Cheng Yennan of class 10 was the target for countless male students' intentions for love confessions. At the same time, they were also planning that they would confess to her while also secretly guarding against each other who wanted to approach her. Tang Xiao Chang Yennan is mine. You must give up on her. Damn, a toad wants to eat a swan. Get the hell out of my way. We, these brothers even have yet to confess to her. 
Your turn is not coming yet. When Tang Xiao had just walked to the classroom's door, a few boys stopped him. They looked at Tang Xiao with a teasing look. The surprising thing was that even Su Duanxin and Tan Li Chuan were amongst them. While Su Duanxin and Tan Li Chuan were stopping Tang Xiao, Su Xiangfei pulled out a bunch of roses behind his back as he jumped out and ran toward Cheng Yannan with a happy expression. Hey, make way. Cheng Yannan is in danger. When Tang Xiao saw a few of his classmates rush to block in front of him, he had the thought to kick them out one by one, but also worried that his relationship with them would be deadlocked, so he couldn't help but snap at them with a soft voice. Huh? Do you think we're ghosts or three years old child? Even if Chen Yannan is in danger, it is not your turn to save her. The class press has already jumped to become a hero to save the princess. Upon here Su Duanxin, Tan Li Chuan and the others ridiculed him. Tang Xiao knew that he had overestimated this group of classmates' IQ. He was very much regretting that he didn't quickly throw this group of stupid bastards and kick them out to the garbage heap. The next moment, a person's shadow jumped over from Madeir and heavily fell to the floor. Followed by the landing of this person, the other shadows also fell down one after another from the air like rain. If you don't want to fucking die, make way. Otherwise, you all will die just like this fucking brat. When everyone still hadn't figured out and were unable to react to what happened, a shocking loud roar suddenly resounded in the corridor outside, followed by a fierce-looking man full with a beard that appeared in everyone's sight. By this time, everyone saw that a man was holding Cheng Yannan's hands in the back with a dagger on her neck. The thrown-out figure turned out to be Su Xiangfei, who was the one fastest to run out of the classroom. The prepared bouquet of roses he had been prepared to give to Cheng Yannan were just like a rose rain that had fallen to the floor, as he himself also fainted in an instant. Suddenly, the accident occurrence turned all the students scared and shh less, as the noisy classroom also quieted down in an instant. Although class 10 had the worst discipline amongst the third-year classes, and most of the boys also were delinquents and were used to the fighting and ditching classes, but they were after all only teenagers. The bearded man's aggressiveness and ferociousness completely broke their cognition apart. All of you enter the classroom with me one by one. If any one of you tries to run away or warn the others, this big daddy will kill this b asterisk tch. And then all you of you will be dead after this sl asterisk t. While the class 10 students were still dazed, the bearded man kicked a few students who were in front of the classroom and blocked the door. He then stood in front of the classroom's door while snapping at a few students with a stern voice. The pitiful few students who stood actually had the chance to escape, but under the fierce and ferocious gaze from the bearded man, they had no choice but obediently run back into the classroom. Shut the door. All the boys move your desks and block the door. Get your asses up, move on. Those who don't move, I'll f asterisk king kill you. Seeing that all the students in the class were in his control, the bearded man walked two steps forward whilst grabbing Su Xiangfei's collar and dragged him into the classroom as he shouted his order loudly, with the bearded man loud shout. The class 10 students felt helpless and had no alternatives but to obey his words to shut the class's door. They then slowly moved their school desk toward the door to block it. Seeing that those students all succumbed to his order, a satisfied expression emerged on the bearded man's eyes. His tense nerves also slightly relaxed as his dagger no longer clinging on Cheng Yannan's neck. He waved from time to time to direct the students' work. You mother asterisk cur. What is your business here? Uf asterisk king dare to bluff and bluster in our class. Ha! <laughs> when Tang Xiao saw a chance and was about to move, someone's voice suddenly burst out behind the classroom. Yuan Chuling lifted up the desk and fiercely slammed it toward the bearded man. In regard height and build, Yuan Chuling completely couldn't compare to the bearded man, but when he was raging and yelled loudly, all the students were shivering violently. Seeing Yuan Chuling bravely rushing forward, all the class 10 students' eyes couldn't help but brighten up as the looks of hope revealed on their faces. 
If Yuan Chuling's attack was to be successful, not only would Chen Yannan escape from a devastating fate, but the other students also didn't have to suffer abuse and humiliation. When class 10 students couldn't bear to cheering Yuan Chuling out, the next scene turned them dumbstruck. The bearded man, as if having foresight ability, forcefully grabbed Chen Yannan's hand all of a sudden and lifted her up and put her in front of him. At the same time, his other hand that wielded the dagger also quickly stabbed toward Yuan Chuling's stomach. Little bastard, I have long been guarding against you. But I really didn't expect that you will really act. Since it has been like this, I don't mind to F asterisk CK you up to warn the others, and kill you first. Seeing the frightened and panicked expression from Yuan Chuling's complexion and eyes, a devilish and fierce smile emerged on the bearded man's face. No! Seeing that the desk wouldn't hit the bearded man, but would hit Chen Yan Nan, Yuan Chuling was raging and panicking out of fear. Unable to stop the force, he couldn't help but shout loudly. No! The class 10 students who clearly saw Yuan Chuling and the bearded man's action also was unable to control their fright, as they screamed out in panic. Chapter 53 The Hero Rescued the Bell No! Looking at the desk that was about to fiercely smash her head, Chang Yannan screamed in desperation. Crystal clear tears flowed down from her eyes as endless remorse gushed out from her heart. Chang Yannan knew that this was happening because of her impulse. Her impulse had courted her fatal disaster. It was because of her impulse that her classmates also fell into this hopeless situation. If time could be reversed again, if the heavens gave her another chance, she absolutely wouldn't be tempted to get involved with her older sister's case investigation. She wouldn't have had acted impulsively to track the suspect on her own initiative. Chang Yannan at first was just thinking that studying was too boring and wanted to experience something to bring flavor to her life. But never once did Chang Yannan would have ever thought that she would run into the root of the case, that her older sister had been investigating for nearly six months on surveillance without any clues. However, she had never thought that the gangster would actually attack her back instead, as the criminal was even extremely bold and reckless enough to act against her at school. Through the information in the case's record, Chang Yannan knew that she had failed to help her older sister. She also might have forced the police to be in an extremely passive position. Moreover, she had dragged her classmates into an extremely dangerous circumstance. While Chang Yannan was thinking that she would definitely die, she suddenly felt the bearded criminal's hand that was grasping her body was loosened. Her body softly fell down to the floor as she could see the following sight that the desk which originally was about to hit her, was smashed on the bearded gangster's cheek. In the critical second, Tang Xiao acted at the moment the bearded gangster was in his most satisfied mood. Tang Xiao directly used both of his hand and grabbed the bearded gangster's shoulders. Not even for a second did the bearded gangster was able to react to what happened as a cracking sound then sounded twice as Tang Xiao pinched broke the bearded gangsters into pieces. After the bearded gangster's scapula was crushed, not only did his right hand have no strength to lift Chung Yannan up again to block the desk that was about to smash at him, he also unable to get a hold of the dagger wielded by his left hand that was about to stab Yuan Chuling. As the dagger fell to the floor, he could only stare blankly at the desk that was about to hit his head. F asterisk king bastard, you dare. The bearded gangster seemed to be fully enraged as he burst out in curses. He immediately lifted his feet to kick the falling Cheng Yannan that was rolling on the floor toward Yuan Chuling. At the same time, the bearded gangster turned his head and hammered his fist to punch Tang Xiao. Seeing that this bearded gangster ignored the acute pain his broken scapula brought him and even made a counterattack against him. An astonished expression flashed in Tang Xiao's eyes. Had it been regular people, their face could have been smashed after getting hammered by this bearded gangster's punch and lost their fighting strength. This bearded gangster was not only able to deal with the threat behind him, but also able to avoid Yuan Chuling's threats on him to a minimum. 
However, it was unfortunate that this bearded gangster encountered Tang Xiao, who had just completed vitality tempering stage and quenched his body. Facing the bearded gangster's swift and fierce attack, Tang Xiao only let out a light shout as he then swiftly grabbed his collar, shouldered him and threw him to the garbage heap behind the classroom. In a quick movement, he stretched his arms out and grabbed the desk and before it hit Chen Yennan, as he caught and held her body. But at this time everyone's attention was not the desk that had broken to pieces or the scattering books on the floor. Their eyes were fully locked on the bearded man's body on the garbage heap. The spot where Tang Xiao was standing to the back of the classroom's corner where the garbage heap positioned was 10 meters away. But he easily dumped and threw the bearded man to the garbage heap. Looking at the bearded man that was 190 centimeters in height and his bear-like built, and then looking at Tang Xiao's slim built with a height that was less than 180 centimeters, all of class 10 students rubbed their eyes repeatedly. They were suspecting that their eyes had problems. Class 10 students would be much more believing had it been Yuan Chuling who threw the bearded man. But never did they want to believe that it was Tang Xiao who threw him out. But after seeing the astonished and dazed look Yuan Chuling had toward Tang Xiao, everyone realized that Tang Xiao was the one and only person who had thrown the bearded gangster, and couldn't be Yuan Chuling who did that. After having been severely crushed into the garbage by Tang Xiao, the burly bearded gangster's body was severely smashed, causing his internal organs to be crushed, as black blood was overflowing from his mouth. Why why you, why why you, with an unwilling expression, the bearded gangster stared at Tang Xiao as he spoke with a weak and faint voice and then completely fainted on the floor. Upon seeing that the bearded gangster fainted, class 10 students subconsciously felt relieved. The previously quiet classroom immediately turned chaotic and noisy, just like at a bazaar. Some students immediately screamed out loud as some others directly ran out of the classroom to inform the police while some other students were weeping loudly. Tang Xiao, since you were that powerful, why the hell did you not save us earlier? Ha! <laughs> Do you fucking want us to be trampled to death by that gangster? The moment Tang Xiao was about to put Chen Yennan down from his arms, a voice full of resentment suddenly sounded. Tang Xiao couldn't help but instantly frown. Tang Xiao was just about to refute it but never would he expect that other students' voices also shouted out loudly, giving him no time to even open his mouth. Yeah. He obviously has a powerful strength. But he was F asterisk king purposefully hiding it. He was just damn intentionally wanting to see us get beaten. How the F asterisk CK did you have that crooked thought? Ha! <laughs> Tang Xiao, that damn gangster entered the classroom at almost the same time with you. Was it you yourself that had brought him to the school? Or the thing happened just now just a play that was simply F asterisk king planned by you? Having heard his classmates' words, Tang Xiao was completely stupefied. Never once did he ever think that his action would be repaid by with such ungrateful curses. Not only were they ungrateful, they were even blaming and questioning him. For a short while, Tang Xiao was speechless. Hey. You've all wronged Tang Xiao. If you were to pay attention to the Xuanqing Daily News, you will find out that this bastard gangster is a wanted criminal by the Ministry of Public Security. He had committed crimes all over the country and is a criminal that traffics human organs. He already had committed 30 homicides. Upon seeing that Tang Xiao was accused wrongly, Chang Yennan was dumbstruck as she immediately defended Tang Xiao with a soft voice. Yen Nan, don't be deceived by that Tang Xiao bastard. Since you knew about that gangster's looks, Tang Xiao absolutely knew about him also. He must have looked for someone with the same looks with that wanted criminal and act like him, right? Tang Xiao's body has always been frail. He even often faints. Never have I seen him pass the school's sport exam even once. Do you think that he could even match a murderer's strength? Tang Xiao certainly wants to pursue you. But he's afraid that you'll reject him and made the scenario to play a hero that rescue the bell. He just wants to move and capture your heart. Not only did Cheng Yennan's explanation not make everyone believe, 
but it even made everyone became more stirred and excited. Eldest brother, you obviously have been accused wrongly. Why didn't you speak out? After having faced the gate of death, Yuan Chuling's face was still palpitating with a frightened expression. But after seeing the complete misunderstanding from their classmates at Tang Xiao, he couldn't help but speak. If they wanted to believe, they would naturally believe it. But if they didn't want to believe, even if you spit thousands of words, they will never believe you. Tang Xiao lightly swept a glance toward the students with an indifferent expression. He didn't speak more and slowly walked toward his desk and sat down. Tang Xiao might be able to be calm and be unperturbed. But the class 10 students were unable to be like him. Actually, the ones who were questioning Tang Xiao were only a small number of students. Most of the students did not even speak. After all, the vicious and ferocious acts and expression that Fiend had done didn't seem to be an act. Yuan Chuling's panicked shouts at that critical moments were unlikely to be an act. Let alone the bruises on Cheng Yennan's wrists and the blood vomiting that the bearded gangster had. Tang Xiao didn't speak more. Cheng Yennan also firmly stood at Tang Xiao's side. Most of the students were silent and didn't even make any noises. Those of who had questioned and railed down Tang Xiao gradually lost their voices. Ten minutes later, the criminal police squad from the city police bureau arrived. The police squad was shockingly led by someone who was Tang Xiao's acquaintance, Cheng Xueme. Tang Xiao was preparing to step forward to greet Cheng Xueme. But Cheng Yannan had stepped forward before he did as she quickly came forward in front of Cheng Xueme before Tang Xiao. However, Cheng Yannan did not even say anything when Cheng Xueme's palm fiercely slapped her face. Chang Yen Nan. Who allowed you to meddle with my case? Ha! <laughs> Who gave you the permission to take unauthorized actions? Why didn't you report to me the instant you found clues? After slapping Chang Yen Nan, Chang Shuemei interrogated her with a stern voice. I. I. Big sis, I'm very sorry, I was wrong, by the time Chang Yen Nan was waiting for her older sister to comfort her. But on the contrary, her older sister slapped her face. She was about to weep because she felt that she had been wronged. But when she saw that her older sister's eyes were also flushed red with a concerning and loving expression on her face, she had no choice but to hold her tears back and apologize in a soft voice. At first, when Tang Xiao saw Cheng Xuemei slapped Cheng Yennan's face, he was quite repugnant and angry. He even almost could not bear to stop Cheng Xueme's hands. However, after listening to the conversation between Cheng Xueme and Cheng Yennan, he could not help but be secretly glad that he didn't rush to act on impulse. While Cheng Xueme and Cheng Yennan were still talking, the criminal police squad inspected the bearded gangster's injury condition. Some of them were also inquiring about the occurrence process to the other class 10 students. Chief, the suspect Ouyang Haifeng's injury is not good. Not only are his internal organs damaged, a few of his ribs are also broken. One of which also penetrated his heart. There's only a slim chance that he will survive. Hu Wenxiu was reporting and at the same time could not help but glance at Tang Xiao. After having inquired from the other class 10 students, Hu Wenxiu got the same answers. The one who dealt with Ouyang Haifeng was Tang Xiao. But when he recalled the scene when he last handled Tang Xiao's case, his body was very weak and he even fainted. He felt that today's matter was very strange. He couldn't even believe everything he had heard. But after he continued asking for a few times and the found that the, all the confessions were consistent, Hu Wenxiu had no choice but to believe. That was, the slim Tang Xiao really had dealt with Ouyang Haifeng. Chapter 54, Beating the Grass to Scare the Snake What? Ouyang Haifeng's life is in danger? How could that be? Isn't he the one nicknamed the undead ox in his team? Cheng Xueme shouted in surprise as she stopped chatting with Cheng Yennan when she heard Hu Wenxiu's report. The reason why Ouyang Haifeng was nicknamed the Undead Ox 
was because he possessed an extraordinary strength. He was as strong as an ox. With strong thick skin and flesh that made him particularly have strong resistance against hits. On the other hand, he was extremely stubborn in nature. Once he decided something, even ten buffaloes would never be able to pull him back. It was exactly due to his temper and ability that Ouyang Haifeng had an absolute core position in his team. But after having heard that such a freaking monster unexpectedly was folded under the hands of an extremely delicate youth, even Cheng Shueme was filled with some kind of unreal feeling. She also admitted that she herself had absolutely no full assurance to be able to subdue Ouyang Haifeng. Hi, Tang Xiao. We meet again. Do you still remember me? Cheng Shueme stared at Tang Xiao for a moment as she finally extended her palm toward the Xiao, smiling and greeted him. Have you been good, Officer Cheng? I'm very happy to see you again. Seeing a touch of inquiry and ruminating expression flashing through Cheng Shueme's eyes, a chill passed through Tang Xiao's heart. At first, he thought of refusing to shake hands with her, but after a thought, he then extended his hand toward her. When their two hands touched and overlapped each other, a touch of a happy expression flashed through Cheng Shueme's eyes as she then suddenly exerted her strength. Cheng Shueme was thinking that she should be able to probe Tang Xiao's strength. But she then felt Tang Xiao's palm was soft and slippery. She had yet to react to what happened when Tang Xiao's hand already slipped away from her palm. What a good young fellow. It turns out that you really have some skills, eh? I really have to test you out. Cheng Shueme hadn't fully used her strength a moment ago. But after Tang Xiao easily got off from her palm, her eyes brightened up as an excited expression could be seen from her face. Officer Cheng, there are more important things to do. Besides, I just rescued Yen Nan, how come you want to deal with Yen Nan's savior? Feeling a fighting intent exude from Cheng Shueme's body, Tang Xiao frowned and hurriedly reminded. You called me Big Sis before, but why are you calling me Officer Cheng now? You couldn't be harboring some hidden intentions, could you? Hearing that, Cheng Shueme hesitated. She immediately stared as she snapped and asked. I'd like to continue calling you Big Sis, but I'm afraid that Yen Nan would scold me. Tang Xiao glanced at an anxious Cheng Yen Nan nearby and intentionally teased. At first, Cheng Yen Nan happily watched the show unfold, but she obviously did not expect that the flame of war would suddenly burn and shoot her. Upon hearing Tang Xiao's teasing, her face suddenly flushed scarlet, even her expression turned shy and twisted up. You. Yen Nan, upon hearing Tang Xiao's words, Cheng Shueme was also stunned. Her vision glanced back and forth between Tang Xiao and Cheng Yen Nan a few times with a mind full of suspicions. But in a public place with a large crowd, it was not good for her to openly ask about Tang Xiao and Cheng Yen Nan's relationship, much less that it was inconvenient to expose. Finally, Cheng Shueme fiercely gazed at Tang Xiao and ended her probing. Tang Xiao, Yen Nan has alerted the enemies. When we rushed to the gangster's headquarter, they had already deserted the place. If they knew about the issue with Ouyang Haifeng, the gangsters will definitely get their revenge. Do you want us to send an operative to protect you? Or you can choose to temporarily stay at the City Public Security Bureau for a few days. After finishing the case records, Cheng Shueme hesitated as she then asked Tang Xiao. The moment Tang Xiao heard it, he immediately shook his head, Officer Chang, if it's fine and convenient, I just want you to arrange a few people to secretly protect my mother. As for myself, I can handle it. Cheng Shueme stared at Tang Xiao for a moment. But seeing Tang Xiao's firm and confident expression, she nodded and complied with his request. She then led the criminal police squad and quickly left. Tang Xiao, you did well today. If it weren't because of you, your classmates could have been in grave danger. I will arrange the school's authorities to give you an award. Before the criminal police had arrived at school, Wei Shintai actually had led the other school's authorities to rush toward Class 10. 
but their main concern was to calm down the scared students and had no time to talk with Tang Xiao. When Wei Shintai wanted to talk with Tang Xiao, the police, Chen Yennan, and Cheng Xueme had already asked him to record his testimony. However, when Tang Xiao, Chen Yennan, and Yuan Chuling were working with the police to record the case, Wei Shintai and the others didn't stay idle and they already found out the details of the incident from the other class 10 students. Knowing that Cheng Yennan and Yuan Chuling almost died, Wei Shintai and others' hearts suddenly thumped. As for the limelight seeker Su Xiangfei, who got kicked by Ouyang Haifeng, from the beginning, nobody paid attention to him. Principal Wei, the rewards are not important. The most imperative thing to do is to improve the school's safety management standards. If the incident today were to be reported by the news media, Tang Xiao didn't get swayed with the rewards spoken by Wei Shintai, but replied with an indifferent expression. Having heard half of what Tang Xiao said, a displeased feeling sprouted in Wei Shintai's heart. He thought that Tang Xiao was quite proud and arrogant. But when Tang Xiao's second sentence came out, Wei Shintai's complexion instantly changed. He looked at Tang Xiao's eyes with a trace of a deeply shocked expression, as well as a grateful expression. For a school, the most important thing was the students. The more students they had, the more income the school got. The more income the school got, the more qualified teachers they could hire. In return, this would increase enrollment rates and attract more students, resulting in a positive cycle. However, if the school was unable to guarantee the students' life and safety, what was the use of a high rate of enrollment? How could there be students who dare to risk their lives to study at Star City First High School? Student Tang Xiao's words are true. I will immediately rectify the school's safety standards. Sweating, Wei Xintai backed Tang Xiao's sentence up. He immediately left with a restlessness and anxious expression, leaving the other school leaders looking at each other in dismay. I have never thought that not only is student Tang Xiao's academic performance amazing, you also have far sight to the overall situation. I'm really amazed. Vice Principal Lu Yunyong looked at Tang Xiao with appreciation before he quickly left. The things that happened today had created a big sensation in the school. The entire Star City First High School higher ups and downs were working together to avert the crisis to their public relation and reputation. Otherwise, Star City First High School absolutely would be pushed to the deep pit. This would severely affect the school's reputation and image and would also cause an extremely grave impact on next year's enrollment. You really never let others stop worrying. Either for disappearing for 10 days and half a month or creating such big sensational actions. Do you think that your teacher's heart is not big enough? Han Qingguo was the only one who stayed after all the school's teachers and leaders had all left. She originally planned to severely reprimand and criticize Tang Xiao after he came back, to tell him that she also had power. But after seeing two students in her class almost get dumped into the gates of hell, the car accident scene from more than a year ago gushed out from inside her mind. Recalling the scene from more than a year ago, when Tang Xiao pulled her back from the gates of hell, the grievances in Han Xingwu's heart toward Tang Xiao instantly evaporated. Her eyes expressed tenderness and great care as she looked at Tang Xiao. The scene from a year ago and today's scene were quite similar. The bold act of disregarding self-safety, the same impulse to do something without wanting something back, the same self-sacrifice for the sake of others, everything was exactly alike. The only difference was that today, Tang Xiao was luckier than a year ago. Now he was fine and had no injuries. Teacher Han, I'm really sorry. I've been causing you so much trouble in this period of time. Sensing the boiling and heating feeling from Han Qingwu, Tang Xiao's eyes quickly shifted and rolled as he then responded in a soft voice. It's all right. You did behave very well today. I'm very proud of you. The next time you encounter this kind of thing, remember to protect yourself first. You must not injure yourself. A ruminating expression emerged on Han Xingwu's complexion when she saw the shy expression from Tang Xiao's face. 
Recalling that Tang Xiao had kissed her before at her office, she felt that the big resentment feeling inside her heart suddenly had paid off. While Han Qingguo was talking with Tang Xiao, the desks in the classroom had been returned to their original state. Apart from bloodstains in the corridor and garbage, it was as if nothing had happened in the classroom. However, a quiet and strange ambience filled the classroom's air, reminding them that something big had happened today. Moreover, it was an earth-shaking big incident. Han Qingguo had finished chatting with Tang and then went to the podium. Students, I, as your teacher, am very sad about today's accident. I think that we are equally sad and restless. Fortunately, Tang Xiao and Yuan Chuling had bravely struggled and finally averted the disaster at the critical moment. Today, let's give our warm applause to thank the both of them. Han Qingguo was just like a queen standing on a royal war chariot as she spoke with a full and imposing aura, looking valiant and formidable. Her voice and words seemed to have a particular magical charm as the restlessness inside the students' chests quickly dispersed. Slowly, the class subject shifted to principle and ideologic. Han Qingguo was now narrating from an ancient retrospective, from the brave heroes of the Qin and Han dynasty's chaotic era, to the modern revolutionary martyrs. She also told about Tang Xiao's brave deeds a year ago. Telling the students about how he bravely rushed forward to save her from the car accident, and then finally concluding the summary for today's incident. Under Han Qingwu's narration, Tang Xiao and Yuan Chuling were impressively transformed into a Hercules that were able to lift up, the bravest of the braves. How they were laughing before the gates of death as the peerless heroes who had always been marching forward, causing all the students' blood to boil and bubble up to the brim. Class 10 students only had known Tang Xiao in his second year in high school after the car accident occurred. They didn't know about how Tang Xiao got in the car accident. But when they knew that Tang Xiao got hit by the car in order to save Han Qingguo, the class 10 students' vision towards Tang Xiao instantly changed. If Cheng Yannan could be said as the target for most of the male students' admiration, then Han Qingguo was absolutely the goddess that all the students worshipped. Whether it was Han Qingwu's figure, looks, or personality, she was worlds apart from Cheng Yannan. Much more, the aura that she exuded was almost impossible for Cheng Yannan to have. Han Qingguo instantly shifted the class 10 students' attention from the gangster incident to Tang Xiao. When she exhorted the students repeatedly that the issues at school today were not to be divulged to outsiders, everyone responded to her in unison. Tang Xiao was at a loss whether he had to cry or laugh as he sat listening in the classroom, looking at Han Qingguo with an itching and disgruntled expression in his eyes. He perfectly knew that with such publicity from her, with more than a month lasting to finish his high school life, it was almost impossible for him to have a peaceful life here. Chapter 55, Disaster to the Family Member As Tang Xiao had expected, his desk was surrounded by other students after class. They were expressing their gratitude as well as were curious about how Tang Xiao had such a big strength. Some others also asked about the specific details of the car accident a year ago. With big efforts, Tang Xiao spent quite some time to send them away before this group of enthusiastic and curious students left. Tang Xiao, do you think Ouyang Haifeng's gang will come to find us and get revenge on campus? Chang Yannan who sat in front suddenly turned around and asked softly when nobody was around Tang Xiao's desk. After having gone through today's incident, I think both the police and the school will increase the security. That gang is unlikely to incite trouble at school. Tang Xiao thought for a second and replied with a serious expression. Thank you. Having heard that, Cheng Yannan seemed to be relieved and then fell into a daze. Tang Xiao couldn't help but be stunned as he scrutinized Cheng Yannan's expression that was worlds apart with her usual response. But Tang Xiao quickly figured it out. Cheng Yannan might have usually been carefree, but she was after all was only a girl, an under 18-year-old girl. She had just gone through a sudden kidnapping by a murderer and almost lost her life. Had it been for others, they could have lost half of their soul. 
When Tang Xiao thought about it, he subconsciously looked at Yuan Chuling, who shared the table with him. He was also different than his usual self and was awfully quiet. He was also uncommunicative when the cops wrote the record, and his complexion now was even deathly pale as he was also in a dazed state. Fatty, are you all right? Tang Xiao pushed Yuan Chuling as he asked him with a concerned expression. I, I, I am fine, abruptly woken up by Tang Xiao, Yuan Chuling's body quivered as he looked around with a blank expression. Realizing he was sitting in the classroom, he hurriedly shook his head. It's okay, your vest is drenched in sweat. Seeing Yuan Chuling's reaction, Tang Xiao scrutinized him and then softly spoke, Fatty, everything has passed, we are safe now. Eldest brother, tell me something. Is it this hard to see someone die? Once a man dies, is it true that his soul is really gone? Yuan Chuling asked irrelevant questions. Hey, I don't know that. Eh, uh, why don't you jump from the window and try it yourself? Tang Xiao leaned his head and thought for a moment, and then he suggested with an extremely serious expression. You. Go to hell, F asterisk CKU. Yuan Chuling obviously had yet to recover from his frightened state. He was in a daze for a long time and only came to his senses after Tang Xiao teased him, as he then punched Tang Xiao over. Hell no, will I explore such a deep philosophical problems? Therefore, I'll just give that honorable task to you. It's better for you, really. Tang Xiao stopped Yuan Chuling's fist as he smiled and made fun of him. Eldest brother, I used to think that I was very powerful. I have both good strength and courage. And I used to believe that I'd be a great hero someday. But when that damned gangster used Chung Yen Nan to block my desk and I had no way to stop or change its direction, I felt that I was really useless. Especially when that gangster stabbed his dagger at me. Hell, you wouldn't be able to know how desperate I was at that time. After Tang Xiao teased him a few times, Yuan Chuling slowly opened up to what he felt inside as he threw out everything that deep inside his heart. Seeing that Yuan Chuling finally broke out from the traumatic shadow due to the gangster incident, Tang Xiao felt relieved. But Tang Xiao didn't know that Cheng Yan Nan who sat in front was secretly eavesdropping on his conversation, although she didn't turn around. Upon hearing the constant teasing Tang Xiao did to Yuan Chuling, Cheng Yan Nan's delicate shoulders shivered. She even almost burst into laughter a few times. But since it was still during class, she had no choice but to hold her urge to burst into laughter. Although Han Qingwu spent 45 minutes in giving a psychological counseling for all the students, and most of everyone's fear had been gone, but many students were still in a dazed state in the classroom. Some of them were afraid. Some others were too excited because once they had the chance to speak, they must blurt out everything they knew about this gangster hijacking incident. As if only by doing so, would they be able to drive out their fear and pacify their excited mood to calm down. The gangster hijacking became the number one topic at Star City First High School today. Class 10 students, especially Tang Xiao, Chen Yan Nan, and Yuan Chuling were the focus of the talks. However, the main players that became the center of talk had long been out of the impact due to the incident. While secretly guarding against the emergence of the retaliating gangsters' members, their thoughts were more focused on their study. One day had passed without anyone noticing. The talks about the gangster incident gradually died down under the deliberate action of the school's authorities. A person in the residential building nearby Star City First High School silently put away his telescope as chilling murderous intention flashed through his eyes. The cop snitcher said that the third brother was killed by a student named Tang Xiao. But how the hell do I feel that this doesn't make sense? There's no way the cop had already found out about our snitch and deployed traps. The middle-aged man wearing glasses amongst them held Tang Xiao's portrait as he repeatedly looked at it a few times. Throwing it aside, he spoke with a confused expression. We know that third brother's fighting prowess might not be the strongest amongst all of us but his strength is definitely the strongest. How the hell did he get buckled down by such a feeble high schooler? 
A youth with a cherry apple shirt also spoke with the same puzzled expression. You wait a bit. I have already completed compiling these three people and their families' information. It will immediately come out. Along with the keyboard type sounds, a man with frameless glasses confidently spoke. Third brother has died. We must avenge him. Regardless of whoever killed him, the bastard will have to pay for this. Since the cops intentionally disclosed third brother's death to the news media, then they must have laid traps at Star City First High School. We'll act opposite of their wishes and shouldn't act toward the high school's students. Those stupid cops don't know that there is a snitch amongst them. Never will they ever think that they were being played by a mole right before their eyes. I can tell that now, they are waiting for us to walk into their trap. The other two men in the house were using a telescope to look at Star City First High School and were focused on Class 10. Cold air exuded from their bodies as they stared with a dark and cold expression. All the information about Tang Xiao, Yuan Chuling, Chang Yannan and their family members are out. Let's take a look at them and then we'll talk about our target to strike. Suddenly, the frameless glasses man waved the A4 papers in his hand and loudly called everyone in the room. Hearing the frameless glasses man, everyone quickly swarmed over and then looked at the information that had just been printed out. This girl is actually that SL asterisk T's younger sister. It's not surprising that she is extremely daring to meddle in our business. Tang Xiao's sports class results failed for a long time. He got in a car accident a year ago and was in an idiotic kind of condition? Holy see asterisk AP. This must be this F asterisk King dead fatty. I'm absolutely sure this is the F asterisk King dead fatty. He looks simple, but I would never have thought that he was a second generation nouveau riche in disguise. He also learned in Taekwondo and is quite powerful. The five men who repeatedly read Tang Xiao, Yuan Chuling, and Cheng Yannan's information a few times directly through Tang Xiao with Cheng Yannan's information aside. Then carefully read Yuan Chuling's information. It was because Tang Xiao and Cheng Yannan's information was too ordinary. Tang Xiao only came from a low social class. He only had a mother, Su Lingyun, who came from a rural village. They also found that Tang Xiao was not only physically weak but also had problems with his brain. Hence, he couldn't be the culprit that had killed Ouyang Haifeng. It was also impossible for him to threaten them. With this reasoning, they decisively threw out the idea to deal with Tang Xiao's mother. As for Chang Yan Nan, she was even weirder. Her information only recorded her older sister. Chang Yan Nan had good fighting prowess, she seemed to have learned military boxing, and her attainment in it was also quite profound. However, since Ouyang Haifeng was able to deal with her before, hence she shouldn't be the one that was able to kill Ouyang Haifeng. Let alone that Chang Yan Nan's sister was a cop. Even though these gangsters had more courage, never once did they ever dare to take the initiative to attack the police. Damn, Yuan Chuling's father's identity is complicated. On the surface, his company is only a high-tech limited company. But it's inextricably linked to the government, even the profits account for hundreds of millions of yuan. The company also has a military secret advisory business credential for confidentiality services. What is his company doing anyways? Fuck, it's too weird. This is way too scary. We mustn't run into the military big shots. But this resume is only showing that he's just an outstanding businessman. Ah. His business must be more than only surveying and mapping service fields, and could be related to the city's secret intelligence and surveillance. I know about survey mappings, but what the hell is with these cities' secret intelligence and surveillance? When they read Yuan Chuling's father, Yuan Jingxuan's information, this group of gangsters were unable to figure out anything, and couldn't clarify the real situation. Yuan Jingxuan's wife, Zhao Jing, is also remarkable. She isn't attached to Yuan Jingxian, but rather has built an independent heavy industry company by herself. Also, her company has just come into business recently. 
Although the current profit couldn't be compared to Yuan Jingxuan's high-tech company, but judging from the long-term prospects, her heavy industry company in no way will be inferior to Yuan Jingxuan's high-tech company. Zhao Jing seems to be an able woman and has a strong character. Because she heard that Yuan Jingxian is close with other women, but without any pieces of evidence, she just directly divorced him. This courage is not something an average woman could have. I don't know how these two people's brains work. The both of them are very difficult, it's hard to compare which one is more powerful. The money they could make is even more that we could get in a lifetime. F asterisk king comparing us with them is just driving me crazy. Just blame them for giving us the way to make money. Okay, let's take on Zhao Jing. As long as we get her, Yuan Zhengxian will automatically take the bait. After having a discussion, this group of gangsters picked their target and then began to brew a plan. At Star City First High School, Class 10's classroom. Although Tang Xiao was reading, but in fact, his mind was wondering most of the time. It was not because of the incident that happened this morning had an impact on him, but it was because he was thinking about a project to make money. Tang Xiao had stayed and spent his time for nearly half a month in school and the provincial library, and basically had read almost all the books there. What he must do now was to screen out all the information in his brain. He needed to analyze the immortal world's vast expanse of concocted pills formulas and their medicinal herbs ingredients, and find their substitutes with the materials and ingredients on earth. Only then would he be able to see which pill formula could be concocted on earth and which would monetize a huge profit for him.